not white or white. Softly its best not to linger, and as I kissed her hand, I could see she wore a plain golden ring on her finger. It was goodbye on the Isle of Capri. Now then, thank you, folks. Thank you. I told you about Bertie. You're sitting at home watching the television with his wife and the telephone rings. And Bertie picks up the phone, holds it to his ear. He says, uh, well, how should I know? How should I know that? He says, why don't you phone up the Coast Guard? Puts the phone down. His wife says to him, who was that, darling? He says, oh, you know, just some, some guy who wanted to know if the coast was clear. <laughs> Typical hill town. See, it hasn't changed its appearance over the centuries. And get ready now, folks. There's a little stand here, just at the side of the road, coming up. And there, there are some women there doing some washing, I see. So, Jan is slowing down for us. Just here on the right. See? Can you see them? It's coming up now. There they are. Oh. the hole that we're going to uh, use to get through the wall uh, was made for the modern traffic. The Romans did not have uh, an opening here. And now we arrive at the Via Veneto. Via Vittorio Veneto, to give it its full name. The centre of Roman nightlife. Uh, well, you know, where you have the uh, sidewalk cafes. Uh, Very famous one here on the left, Doney, D-O-N-E-Y, yeah? which adjoins uh, an old established hotel called the Excelsior. It's this hotel here on the corner. Cafe de Paris, right hand side. It's by Queen Margarita. See the uh, stars and stripes outside? And uh, around here you have the offices of the airline companies, Swiss Air, Lufthansa, the German National Airline, Singapore Airlines on the right, Alitalia is on the left, the Italian airline, Qantas, which is the only word I know of in the English language where Q is not followed by a U, because it stands for Queensland and Northern Territories, Australian airline. To, uh, this is a rather sad story, this is very sad, so get your handkerchiefs out. Uh, over on the left, there's a copy of the famous Moses statue. Uh, I, I stress, it's not the original Moses, it's a copy. And the man who did it did such a bad job, just take a look here on the left, at this niche here. See, the Moses? He did such a poor job that people uh, took the mickey, and he took it to heart, and he committed suicide. Now we're coming down to uh, a nice fountain, which, uh, however, is not an old fountain. It was put there at the end of the 19th century, and is situated in a square called uh, the Piazza della Repubblica, the Square of the Republic. Look over there on the left where you see the ancient Roman ruins, where you see the scaffolding. Those are the ruins of the Baths of Diocletian.
They were the largest of the ancient Roman baths. Now it's a church inside. It is a church of St. Mary Major, or Santa Maria Maggiore in Italian. It's one of the four pilgrimage churches of Rome. Outside the walls. So look at it, it's a really tremendous church. And it stands on top of one of the seven hills of uh, Rome, uh, the Esquiline Hill. See, there is a, an obelisk uh, in front of the church, and surmounting the obelisk there is a cross, which means that uh, Christianity has triumphed over pagan uh, religions. Because as you know, these uh, obelisks were pagan symbols for the Egyptians. speciality of the restaurant, which is uh, crepe with spinach. You know, you call them crepe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, crepes, yeah. Crepe is Italian crepe. And um, then you have uh, the meat. Roast potatoes and uh, salad. Dessert of uh, fruit salad with ice cream. Oh, no, I beg your pardon. I don't think it is with ice cream. I think it's just fruit salad. Uh, and then we can have wine as much as we like. The wine of the, you know, Castelli Romani. Yeah, however, yeah, hold on a minute before you rejoice. You know, on. Okay, now look at these ancient Roman uh, buildings here on the right. Still standing. Well, I mean, it's, uh, they're ruins, I know. But these are ancient Roman ruins. And uh, we are driving uh, uh, along a street called the Street of the, Inf uh, of the Imperial Fora. So there on the right-hand side are the Fora, which date from after Christ, Well, on the left-hand side is the Forum Romanum, dating back to B.C. Very important part of Rome, this. Uh, this street was laid out by Mussolini. So he wanted to show off the ancient Roman ruins. Trajan's column on the right uh, with the scaffolding on it. An ancient Roman uh, monument with a figure on the top, not of Trajan, but of uh, uh, St. Peter. Now we've come into a, a large square of Rome, an important heart of the city. This is Piazza Venezia, Venice Square. A tremendous monument on the left-hand side of Victor Emmanuel II, the first king of Italy. And this is the Assurance Company of Venice. That's where you have a winged lion in the stone up there on the right, you see? This building dating back to only 1907, while the building on the left-hand side is a much older building. In fact, it's the, the original, the oldest uh, public Renaissance building to have uh, gone up. It's 1455. It's called the Venice Palace. You see that um, above the door, where that balcony is, that's uh, where Mussolini would come and uh, address the crowds below. Mussolini announced the war, you know, World War II, from that balcony. And can you see the Colosseum out there left, on the left, folks? Can you see? Look to the left, the head. See the Colosseum? You're not supposed to see it tonight yet. You're supposed to see it after dinner still, you know. If you all had, uh, if you're all wearing uh, eyeglasses, I could ask you to take your eyeglasses off so you wouldn't see these things yet. Here on the uh, left, uh, this great memorial to Victor Emmanuel II is made of Botticino marble, which comes from Brescia in northern Italy. So we passed uh, some of those quarries. It stays white, much more than the Carrara marble does. It's you know retains its white appearance. Now, why are these particular ancient Roman ruins so precious? Because, ladies and gentlemen, they date back uh, to the uh, 3rd century BC and uh, 2nd century BC. Uh, and, uh, in other words, these ruins, uh, uh, some of them are so old that they, we, we say that they are dating back to the consular period before Rome became an empire. And they're so old that they don't know to whom BC and D. And they discovered uh, those ruins only 80 years ago when they demolished the buildings that stood above them, quite by chance. They didn't know that those ruins uh, lay underneath. Now, do you want to see where Julius Caesar was assassinated? Okay. 
This church coming up on the left-hand side, the church of Santa Andrea, the one that looks kind of like, like it needs a good clean, uh, on the site of that church was Pompey's Theatre. And at Pompey's Theatre, Julius Caesar was assassinated on the Ides of March. You know, the 15th of March in 44 BC. And then his body was taken from there to the Forum, the Roman Forum, uh, where, uh, as you know, uh, Mark Antony made a famous speech. So this is the site of uh, Pompey's Theatre. You know, part of Pompey's Theatre still is uh, standing. I mean, below, they've excavated, and uh, it covered quite a large area, not just the area of the present church of Sant'Andrea. Pompey's Theatre. We're driving along a uh, street, quite a wide street, called Corso Vittorio Emanuele, which means Victor Emmanuel Street. Victor Emmanuel, the first king of Italy. Always referred to as Victor Emmanuel the second for the reason that he was Victor Emmanuel II the, the of Sardinia Piedmont before he became King of Italy, and he simply kept his title. Look at these beautiful Renaissance palaces. Along the street, we have palaces designed by Amanati and San Gallo and even Michelangelo. Narrow streets, look to the right, all of these streets, very narrow, very typical of uh, Rome. And sometimes when you look down those narrow streets, you look, you look down on cobblestones which have been worn down to a pebble smoothness by the feet of 2,000 years. Those are the original paving stones that the ancient Romans uh, put in. That's why Rome is such a fascinating place, because uh, the modern Rome uh, and the ancient Rome are all together. If you go to Athens, you'll find that the uh, old uh, Athens is on a different site from the modern city. But in Rome, it's not the same situation at all. Above all, uh, it was SPQR, the Senate and people of Rome approved it. This is an ugly bridge that we cross. It's one of the 24 bridges over the Tiber. Uh, but look to the right, and there is a very beautiful bridge on the right-hand side, leading to that Castel Sant'Angelo, that circular building. Castel Sant'Angelo, can you see the lower part looks older than the upper part? Can you see what I mean? Look at the stones. Now the lower part, you see, uh, was built as a mausoleum for the Emperor Hadrian in 135 AD. And the upper part was, was built in uh, 220 uh, to be a fortress. And then afterwards in uh, uh, Renaissance times, uh, uh, it was uh, converted to a residence uh, for the Pope in time of trouble. Now you see ahead is St. Peter's Church, the greatest church in the world. The dome designed by Michelangelo, 500 feet high. There's no steel iron and steel in that, it's just made of stone. It's an incredible work of architecture. And this broad avenue leading to it is uh, called the Street of the Reconciliation, laid out by Mussolini in 1929, because uh, before that time, the Italian state and the church weren't on speaking terms. So we're coming back here again tomorrow, you see. But anyway, here is our first glimpse of that enormous uh, church, um, which I, I know there's so many people uh, involved uh, in the building of St. Peter's Church, but all we have to do is remember two famous names. Michelangelo, who designed the dome, and Bernini, Gian Lorenzo Bernini, uh, who did the decorations and uh, who was also responsible uh, for the high altar. You know, nobody beautified Rome more than Bernini. Born at the end of the 16th century was Bernini active in the 17th century.